What is up YouTube? In this video, let's look at how I was able to pass the Databricks Data Engineering Professional Certification Exam in 2024. So when I was kind of preparing my way for the exam, for the certification, I could not find a lot of material, a concrete material uh, in terms of a guide, which gives me a holistic view in terms of preparation. Even though Databricks provides a lot of default content and material, um, I still feel there's, there's a holistic view which is kind of missing. So in this video, I will cover those aspects and help you kind of prepare the, the for the examination uh, with my three-step method. Also, if you're interested in a certification voucher, stay tuned till the end of the video to know how I was able to give the certification exam for free. All right, as a next step, let's first try to understand how the exam looks like. Overall, I felt th this exam to be a bit more difficult than the associate one. Actually kind of focuses on the depth instead of the width. It, uh, it, it really looks into uh, your capabilities of building data engineering pipelines, knowing about the workloads, jobs, uh, building streaming pipelines. So those kind of things it's kind of really looking into. That's the holistic view I kind of felt while giving the exam. There are 60 questions in total. 120 minutes have been given uh, to kind of answer these 60 questions. There's a $200 fee. Uh, if you stay till the end of the video, you will know how you can kind of uh, get a voucher for it. Multiple choice questions. Uh, there's no negative marking, one thing, and it's in English, what right? Um, in terms of uh, the recommended experiences, they, they expect you kind of be a bit more hands-on. Uh, I kind of see the reason being uh, a bit more hands-on because compared to the associate one, this really looks into your capabilities of using Databricks to kind of build pipelines. The first one is Databricks. Uh, so the first one is Databricks tooling, which covers the whole aspect of the uh, the functionality or, of the tool or, or the platform as a whole, how you, do you use it using CLI or even like the, the interface, right? Uh, the other thing is data pre processing, which is actually ask, there's a lot more questions in data pr processing than anything else. Uh, basically looking into how you build pipelines, streaming pipelines, uh, a lot more things, a lot more, a bit more details around, which we will go in, in, in further, right? Uh, it also looks into data modeling aspect, which there's a lot more questions in data modeling. There's some questions in governance and security, there's questions in logging and monitoring, some of those, and then testing and deployment. So yeah, this is overall the structure of the exam. Before we cover my three-step method and the approach I kind of followed to clear the exam, let's kind of answer one more question is why do why do you even get a Databricks certification in the first place, right? Uh, I want to present a few key points here, right? So one of the key points is Databricks is one of the key cloud platform technologies around surrounding data engineering, data science, machine learning, and AI. Another is um, they're kind of the key leaders in terms of the data storage tech. So the Databricks kind of came out with the Lakehouse solution, which is kind of powered by by the Delta Lake. Um, so it's kind of a mixture of being a warehouse and a data lake both. Another point is they were like, uh, the founders of Spark are kind of founded Databricks itself. So all of the, the Databricks stuff is being powered by Spark. It's one of the key data engineering language uh, if you want to execute data workloads at scale. So it's another another key plus. So being in this space, Databricks is one of the preferred choice for a lot of companies, so mid to large size companies. Uh, they, uh, they are kind of using it. So it's actually, uh, it's it's, it becomes very useful if you have a certification to kind of showcase this skill set, which is relatively niche compared to other cloud companies, right? So if you're in this space, if company is kind of looking for a Databricks expert, you have the uh, certification, bam, you're on top of the list, right? So this is how kind of I present if I'm kind of going for interviews. All right, in the next section, let's look at my three-step method to pass the exam. So the first step is preparation. There were like four things in general uh, in terms of resources where I looked at, mainly two resources, like one is Databricks uh, customer learning or partner learning. Um, you need to be in a partner organization or a customer organization uh, to, to have access to this portal. There are a few courses you need to do uh, to kind of prepare for the exam. I always felt this, uh, uh, the of the official details or the official uh, uh, preparation material were not as much in line with the exams, the questions being asked in the exams. The preparation was kind of not covered in a way where uh, where it would align with uh, what the questions were being asked in the exam. They were more holistically, uh, uh, they were most holistically looking at the platform in terms of usage, which is good in a way that you get to know how to use the platform, right? Uh, kind of build pipelines and whatnot. So there were a few things uh, 
I, I actually use and something I just skipped over. So I can, I can walk through what I did. So there are four, three things you can, uh, three, three main tutorials you kind of can use to kind of cover for the exam. The first and foremost is certification overview, uh, which I would say never, don't miss it. It's, it's not a long uh, tutorial. It's like basically one video of like 20 to 30 minutes, if I'm not wrong. Uh, the kind of things it covers is uh, uh, like the, the distribution of the, uh, the questions, uh, the, the details of the distribution of the questions, like what questions will be asked around Databricks tooling, what topics will be covered around Databricks processing. So these kind of things are being covered in this uh, in this tutorial. And as in for the next uh, course was, the second one was Data Engineering with Databricks, which was formerly called Data Engineering with Databricks V3. Uh, so this is the course which you use to pass the associate exam. So the, 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 br the breadth of the course is a lot more for the associate exam. So it's covering all the different topics, uh, like such as managing Delta Lake, building data pipelines, right? Um, a data flow, Unity Catalog. Uh, basically, it's covering all the concepts. Uh, so for someone who hasn't used Databricks in general, for me, that wasn't the case. And for me, I actually passed the exam. So I did not go through it for this preparation, but someone who's like really new, I would 100% recommend going through it. Uh, someone who is familiar with uh, all these different services with Databricks. So I think they can skip that. Um, maybe just skim through it if you want, because this course will take a lot more time to kind of cover, um, to go through, right? So there's a lot more, uh, uh, there's there's a lot more videos, there's a lot more topics, and it, it is a bit broad for the questions being asked in the exam. So yeah, that's my take on it. So the next one is basically Advanced Data Engineering with Databricks. That's the main uh, course for the professional exam. Th so this is what they ask you to kind of go through for preparing for the professional exam. And it, it, it also covers uh, some aspect to it, but the core aspects which are being asked. Um, I didn't feel this was like sufficient in, enough to prepare for the exam, but if you have time, I, I would also suggest go through it. Uh, that uh, a few key things it covers is streaming ETL patterns, which is important, which is an important uh, topic in the exam and is being asked a lot. Data ingestion pattern, auto loader, and whatnot. Right? So these these kind of things are important. Uh, privacy and governance. Uh, incremental processing is also a very important area. So yeah, if you're new, uh, if you have the time, I would say then go through this. Otherwise, I would say just skip to the next part, which is uh, this Udemy course I kind of mainly use for me uh, to pass the exam. I felt this was quite sufficient and very much in line with the, with the exam. I will leave a link in the description. Uh, the The trainer's name is Al Hussein. Uh, I hope I'm pronouncing the name right. But uh, his course was perfect in line. The kind of topics were being covered were, were very much in line with the exam. So a few of the key topics is uh, is like the bronze ingestion pattern, multiplex bronze, like how do you get the data, uh, all the different data into a, like a multiplex table in, into instead of a single sing place, single plex table, uh, multiplex tables streaming into multiplex table, like multiple entities coming into a single uh, table using JSON. So these are very important topics, streaming de deduplication, uh, uh, slowly cha changing dimensions. So this is actually important to cover. So I would 100% recommend going through this um, course as a whole, change data capture field, Delta Lake CDF. So how Delta Lake already has this feature to kind of have chain data capture uh, in type two. Uh, SCDs, right? So, so yeah, these kind of things is important. Stream and stream joins, stream and static joins, are uh, really important concepts. So, the next step in my three-step preparation method is building a documentation portal or notes where you can always go back to and revise the concepts just before the exam. So, this is the pre the preparation method or the study method I usually follow. Uh, back in the day, back in the school days, I used to write my notes, but nowadays I use a tool, online tool called Notion. Uh, I really like the tool. I usually use it for all my documentation and uh, on notes purposes. So, yeah, uh, let's have a look again on how my documentation portal or, or, or the notes section kind of looks like. So, for uh, for each course I did, I had created another page for each one of it, where I kind of inlined, uh, like took screenshots, noted down the important concepts. So maybe as an example, I can show uh, the course I really used to prepare for the exam was the Udemy course. Uh, and like I kind of laid down into like toggles uh, for each each section of the course, like modeling and data management, how do you add constraint with, th with time send within a range, so all these concepts were kind of in line. How do you have a valid quantity check? So I took screenshots wherever I, I felt um, you need to 
wherever i felt these were like important things to be answered like especially in in context of uh, an exam right uh, so these kind of things how, how does a streaming du- duplication work deduplication at the civil civil level compared to the bronze level uh, how do you drop duplicates uh, within spark at least for streaming right uh, so 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 i was like really preparing my notes taking screenshots writing it down so this is how like i totally prepared for the exam when i went to an- another example i can take is like dataplex tooling uh advanced job con- configurations so like owner of the job has all the permissions his credentials are basically whenever a job is created owner has all the permissions on the job it can be transferred it can be transferred to an in- individual but not to a group so these kind of question i was like really noting down because i can always come back to see hey revise uh important concepts uh especially in context of the the course in the udemy course was really in line of encouraging you to note these these things down the nitty gritties which can be asked in the exam right so it was like really covering in terms of the exam preparation so yeah uh i will basically leave a link uh i will leave a link for this course which is publicly uh, which would be pu- which should be publicly available i've kind of published it out uh so you should have access to it i will leave a link in the description so but i would still recommend uh instead of you can still look into it if you want to but i would recommend uh, creating a, your own documentation portal be it on uh maybe it is it's on an actual notebook or be it it's on like a notion page or a notes uh, app or anything whatever works for you right so you need to figure it out so the last step uh in my three step method is give as many as mock exam you can find on the internet for this topic so the official uh, certification web page from databricks doesn't provide any mock exam for you to look at um maybe the first certification overview would have some questions uh being discussed but there's not not a definitive mock exam being posted out by databricks maybe that that might have changed in time but when i gave the exam it wasn't there or maybe i have missed it uh, so yeah uh, may, maybe just take my word with a grain of salt and have a look so there's another course from aluzain which basically has all these practice exams these doesn't contain the actual question from the exam fii but the questions are very in line on how it's going to be in the exam so it re- really helps you prepare for the concepts and it uh, it also takes the inspiration from the course right so a lot of the qu- questions are actually based on the course so it really helps you solidify the question uh so he has like two practice tests with 60 questions each i would recommend buying this course on udemy and just giving both of them uh it actually really helped me a lot in my preparation uh it has really good questions and it has timers so you can always like work your way out maybe give it a few times if you're not able to clear the exam have 80% or more something like that even though the criteria is 70% aim for 80% right so that's what i did i did the both of the exam i think the the exam number one i did twice the the exam number practice exam 2 i just did once right so it really helped me prepare the concept another website is exam topics uh you can also try to find uh, exam questions there i i didn't look too much into it but there might be some questions uh you can look into which are uh, which maybe not the same questions but um uh, it really helps you prepare for the for the exam yeah going back to my documentation portal uh when i was giving the exam I was noting down the points I was not able to understand right so I uh I was looking like f- I went through each question noted down my answer and for someone I was not able to understand the answer it gives an explanation so I was able to like write down those answers copy it out so I can always refer back so this is how usually I prepare for my certification examination and for the other important concepts such as like questions on uh, like uh, uh details on ganglia ui which can be asked in the exam uh so it's like w- what is a ganglia ui how it is being used something like that so i always noted it down after answering those questions uh, and you can always look into it and go back to these topics so these topic these these topics i found um, interesting so that's why i've noted it down with answers and what not so i so I, i always went back and like went through it again and again before giving the paper, uh, f- before giving the exam all right if you found this video to be helpful definitely hit the like button and subscribe to the channel it really helps a lot to push my content to people like you thanks a lot for watching see you in the next one